Hey YouTube, how's it going? Kevin Cleary here with a knife video for you, and today I've got a pretty exciting one. This is going to be my full review and discussion of this very attractive offering from Giant Mouse. This, if you're not familiar with it, is the GMP3, and that's as opposed to the GM3, which is just the Giant Mouse 3 third knife that they have issued, uh, or I guess third folder that they have issued. Um, the first one I was more interested in. The second one, it didn't do much for me. This one, I love the design, but I do have to say it's a little smaller than what I normally like. Uh, what I do want to do right away is thank Phil, uh, a fellow knife enthusiast and viewer, for sending this along for me to check out. Very, very exciting piece, and it's really, really cool that I was able to get my hands on this. But honestly, uh, Phil, without your help, I would not be making this review at all and uh, I wouldn't be getting to check out such an impressive knife, and this is very impressive. Um, <clears throat> let me uh, point out, first of all, that the normal GM3 is going to have titanium handle material, and this one is done in bronze. This was sort of a, a an even more select edition of the GM3, uh, and and only a hundred of these were made. So not super easy to get your hands on. I know there were more of the regular GM3 and I suppose people could argue that that one is a little more practical, but buying a knife like this is not really about practicality. If you were just interested in practicality, you know, you could buy a Swiss Army knife or a, a Cold Steel American Lawman or something like that. Uh, this is about, you know, pride of ownership. It's about a piece of functional artwork. Uh, it's about exclusivity. There's only a hundred of these. And so all of those things make this knife pretty darn cool. And the other thing you've got to say about this is you don't see very many knives done in bronze. And the fact that they did that, despite the fact that it makes the knife a little heavy and maybe a little less practical for a gentleman's folder, which I feel like is this knife's calling, uh, is, is kind of interesting and rather bold and I will say that I do appreciate it. So that's what we're looking at. The GMP3 which is the even more limited run, only a hundred of the GM3 uh, but done with bronze. So let's go ahead and get into size and weight on this guy. Overall seven and three quarter inches and so you guys know eight and a half inches was really my magic number and we're far short of that and I will say in hand this suffers from the th same thing that puts me off of most small knives. I just don't feel like it's substantial enough in hand. Now uh, in terms of its use I you know it's it's fine it's comfortable I have no complaints about it from a, a practical standpoint. Uh, again I like a little more blade length for that extra reach but certainly not the end of the world. The blade here is very close. And I, and you know, if you think about the fact that something like the Paramilitary 2, let's actually, let's go ahead and grab it here. So the Para 2, which is much bigger and a knife that I really, really like, actually has about the same amount of cutting edge. Um, that is, that's pretty nice. So for a knife of this size, you're actually getting a fair amount, fair amount of utility. The blade here is three and five sixteenths. The handle, is four and seven sixteenths, so fairly small handle, and this dimension is just barely an inch. In fact, it may not even make an inch. So very small footprint in your pocket, which is very much appreciated. And in the GM3, without the bronze scales, this would be a super, super nice carry knife. This one at 4.89 ounces is pretty dense, okay? So it's very heavy for its size. Uh, but again, I think that's a sacrifice that most people would be willing to make to get a knife as cool as this. And, and you know, if you, you're buying this, you probably have a collection. So on a day where you're wearing maybe really lightweight slacks or something that the weight isn't going to be appropriate for, you can carry one of the other knives in your collection. I, I think this is going to be a knife that appeals more to sort of enthusiasts more so than just somebody looking for a, a nice EDC knife, okay? So that's size and weight, seven and three quarter inches, three and five sixteenths on the blade, seven and four sixteenths handle, and 4.89 ounces, which is a little heavy. When it comes to carrying this knife around, um, because of the density of it, because it's very small and dense, I actually noticed this in pocket even more than other knives that weigh more but are just a little more spread out, you know. Uh, it's it's a little heavier than, or I mean, it, it carries heavier than it actually is, uh, but not, you know, uncomfortably so, if that makes sense. So, you know, if you're carrying this in a pair of 511s, or even, you know, I wear uh, sort of 
you know, dress casual for work when I'm preaching on Sunday, and this would carry fine in, in the kind of pants that I normally wear. You know, I'm not wearing a lot of linen or silk or anything like that, and probably most of you aren't either. So probably not an issue in terms of the, the weight there. Let's go ahead and talk about the blade, and the blade is a very impressive bit of work here. We've got M390 with a full flat grind, as I mentioned already, three and five sixteenths in length. Uh, and most of that is given to you in cutting edge. Very nicely crowned spine here. Lots of extra points for that. I absolutely love that. Just a, just a touch of added attention. I always really, really appreciate. Of course, a lot of lion steels do that, and this knife is made in Italy. Um, <clears throat> In terms of the jimping, I would wish it were just a little bit longer, okay? My thumb normally lands about here, and you can see that I totally missed the run of jimping that's all the way back here. Although if you had smaller hands, and, and you know, this knife is definitely gonna be suited for someone with fairly small hands at a, as a fairly small knife in itself, um, <clears throat> that jimping may be just fine for most users. The nail nick on here is something I definitely want to talk about. In terms of just the aesthetics, okay, I wish it weren't there. I feel like it does subtract something from the blade. Uh, and, and, it, and I think the reason it stands out, I had one viewer comment and say, you know, why do all the reviewers kind of zone in on this nail nick and, and not be able to kind of get past it? And I think it's because we're not used to seeing that in sort of a modern folder like this. Uh, it's you know, it, it's sort of like putting a hand crank on the front of a, a you know, a 2017 Ford F-150. You go, that seems out of place, right? And, and I think the same is true of the nail nick. It, it's not bad. It definitely doesn't affect function as far as I'm concerned. Um, but it just seems like it's an odd thing to have on here. And, and if you look at the knife on this side, honestly, I think the blade is more attractive on this side. Now, there'll be some people who agree, with, disagree with me. And of course, you're well within your rights to do that. All right. Now, what I will say is it does not hurt the cutting performance of the knife. So if you're worried about that, I don't think it's something you have to concern yourself with. Uh, either my, I, I actually sent an email to, or I, I mentioned to the actual owner to say, have you ever had any issues with gunk and everything getting in there? And he said, no, not at all. And, and you know, I have a few knives with fullers. Uh, this is a good example. I use this for comparison. And, and I don't have any issues with that kind of thing either. Okay, so I don't think, you know, function is um, limited or harmed in any way by the nail nick. But on the other hand, I would also say that function is not really improved because even if there was no nail nick here, you can easily access that blade and open it two-handed. And now I've got fingerprints back on the knife. They're just gonna have to stay there for the rest of the video. I'm not gonna bother wiping them off. Uh, so, blade I think is a total win. The crowned spine is beautiful. Uh, overall, I've gotta say, I'm very, very happy with the way they've done this blade. They've also really balanced out. Look at the way that they've done their distal taper here. They've really, really nicely balanced um, toughness, durability with a very, very sharp, very fine point. Okay, so really, really well done just all around on the blade, uh, even including, you know, con giving a consideration to that nail nick. Lock up and deployment. So this is a liner lock, which is interesting. You know, normally, you know, higher end knives, they're almost always frame locks. This is not, it's a liner lock. Fairly thick liner there that is nested into the bronze on this side, on the lock side, obviously. Uh, and it is really, really nicely done. Now I'm gonna try to show you something. Hold on, let me grab a flashlight, guys. Just bear with me for one second. I think I can do this. Okay. So, yeah, there you go. You can see it now with the flashlight. If you look there, and I don't think I'm gonna get it exactly, hold on. There is the Giant Most logo engraved into that lock bar, and I think that's just a really neat little touch of detail. You can also see, maybe you can see it without the light better, the serial number down in there, 27. Let me try one more time to show you the Giant Most logo there on the lock bar. I don't think I'm gonna pull it off. That's okay. You'll have to trust me that it's there. Uh, I'm not going to tear this knife apart and show you to it, show it to you that way because it's not my knife. Uh, so, 
Very, very well done lockup and deployment overall. Uh, the jimping on the thumb ramp, or the, the jimping on the flipper is really nicely done. And if you just come down and sort of light switch this, it works really, really well. The detent is very much dialed in. And I've got to say, the detent can be a little tougher to get right on a blade of this size. This is not a big, heavy blade, so you're not getting a lot of inertia created from that detent uh, or from that initial flipping action. And so it's gotta be pretty well done in order to get this to flip consistently, and it really, really does. And you'll notice that, by the way, guys, with any lighter bladed knife you have, um, <clears throat> the detent has to be dialed in pretty well to get it to flip consistently. There's a fair bit of lock bar tension, which does put a little pressure. So as I'm folding this blade, you know, it doesn't just drop free super easily because the uh, lock bar is putting a little tension on there. And you're seeing the other issue I have, and this is really about the only negative thing I have to say about this, is the lock bar is a little tough to access. It would have been nice to have just a little bit more taken out of this choil on the show side so that I could get a little bit more thumb there on the, uh, on the lock bar. Uh, not the end of the world, and, and as you can see, as I just flip the knife open a dozen times or there in a couple of seconds. Uh, it's not a real problem, it's just a minor uh, inconvenience, I would say. Now, on so everything, you know, in terms of action, it's very nice, the flipper works well, it's comfortable, the jimping is good, even the jimping on the lock bar is good, the bearing pivot is nice and smooth, so all of those things are really well done, and, and I just kind of, I'm gonna mention them and move on with life, but the one thing I really wanna focus on for a second is the detent ramp. So look at the bottom of the blade tang there and see how there's just that little angle cut out of it. That angle is to allow for the detent ball. I'm gonna, here we go. So at this point, the blade, see the detent ball there has not passed the detent ball. When it does hit right there, it just ramps up onto the blade tang, which is awesome. So this is really, really well done. And it's so simple that I can't believe no one has done it before in exactly this way. Normally you see a detent ramp and it's a track. Okay, here, all they've done is ground a little angle on the blade and it works so, so well. Now it does mean that lockup has to be a little later. So if you look at the way the lockup is here, see how it has to get past that ramp, which I suppose is why most people don't do it, but, you got steel on steel, and, and the lockup is still less than 50%. So I don't find any issue with how they've done that. I don't really think it creates the potential for the blade to, you know, pop off the lock bar or anything like that. Uh, in fact, I think it's absolute genius. You know, anytime you see a simple solution to a common problem, you know, that's that's really, really good design. That's really, really good engineering when you when you don't have to do some elaborate scheme to get around a problem, but rather just a very simple little grind and bang, you've got a detent ramp that works very, very well. I, I have to give so much credit to uh, Giant Mouse for pulling that off. Very, very well done. Okay, so that's um, lockup and deployment. What I have in my notes here is detent ramp for the win, by the way. <laughs> uh, next, talk about the handle. Well. As you can see, you've got uh, black, black washed bronze scales here. Very, very attractive. Definitely make this knife different and interesting and very cool. Of course, it's also highly limited, which adds something, I think, to, uh, to the value and to the level of interest there. Uh, nicely anodized backspacer. 3D machine clip that works very, very well in and out of pocket. Nice big lanyard hole, no issues at all there. Of course, as we've already said when we talked about size and weight, the brass does make the knife heavier, okay? And uh, the, the saving grace, I guess, is that the knife is small enough that even if you use like solid gold or lead or some other really dense material like this, it's not gonna get that heavy because there's just not that much here to, to, to begin with, you know? Uh, so, uh, I have no issue with them using that. Uh, otherwise, fit and finish is very, very nicely done. Now, I wanna talk about ergonomics a little bit and how they've kind of finished things off. The ergonomics, it's comfortable. Uh, certainly, the crown spine is a very, very nice touch. I'm a big fan of that. It's not very hand-filling, which is common for a knife of this size. Um, and so, in, on terms, in terms of ergonomics, I don't really have a big issue. Um, <clears throat> the one thing I would say is 
in a in a dream world where you know I could imagine any kind of perfect thing that I wanted, this knife would be bigger. You know, if this was a three and a half inch blade and and everything else was sized up accordingly, uh, I would be you know selling the farm to buy one of these because it's so well done. Uh, at this size, it's just a little too small for me, and therefore, from an ergonomic standpoint, I just don't find it hand filling enough. Now, there is one thing I want to comment on, and if any of you, you know, I know I have a lot of overlap with Nick's channel, and Nick did talk quite a bit about being able to contact the blade. So, from the back here, being able to reach in and touch that blade. And I have tried and tried and been unable to do that. You can see I can slide my fingers down there. Even if I push in, I can't you know, I can't touch that blade. So I, you know, I, maybe there's a slight difference in, I don't know, the, the, the um, stop pin position or something like that on the smaller version. I don't know. But for me, that has not been a problem and neither has the, the tip of the knife been a problem down here. Again, I don't get any catching on that no matter what I do. And so, uh, it probably depends a little on your hand size. You know, if you have uh, the hands of an elf or something, then maybe this could be an issue, but I don't see it. So uh, I'll have to, you know, and I wanted to mention that specifically because, you know, when when someone like Nick or the Apostle or, you know, guys who are well known and have a good reputation, you know, mention something like that, everyone, if I don't say it in my video, everyone is gonna be asking in the comments. So that's my take on the, the being able to touch the blade. I just don't find that I have that issue. Okay, let's get to some comparisons. So I've got some cool comparisons here uh, that are you know similar in their exclusivity and design. Uh, here is, of course, the Olamic Swish. So if you didn't get one of these, if you weren't in on the 100, uh, you can pick up a Swish. It's still a fairly small knife. For me, I'm, I'm much more happy with the size of this knife. It's still not huge. Uh, it's actually a little lighter and has much more blade, which I definitely appreciate. And if you really need something with a nail neck, you've got this nice fuller groove on the swish to, to kind of keep that part of your interest satisfied. All right, so that's one comparison, you know, similar price point. I think the Swish might be a teeny bit more uh, and still not a huge knife. Certainly this knife would be well suited to be a gentleman's folder. Uh, what else have I got? Oh, Para 2. Now, there are a couple of reasons I want to bring this knife in. One, everyone's familiar with the Para 2. Number two though, look at the amount of blade length you're getting here. So not a huge knife, but you're basically getting the same cutting edge as the Para 2, which I've got to say is pretty impressive. Now the Para 2 again is lighter, even though you can see how much bigger it is. Uh, I think this knife is a little closer in size. This one I was going to show you because of the fact that, you know, if you're looking for something high end for something well built that's fairly small and slim, this guy might suit your needs or a number of other Wii knives that are out there. There's a few of them that are, you know, not overly difficult to carry and deal with. Uh, so this is the 604. Again, much, much bigger. And guys, that's just the nature of my collection. So this is not a knife, I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna have a lot of knives for comparison that are similar in size because I don't really carry knives that are similar in size. One of the closer ones that I have that I also, you know, that also has a lot of impressive things going on here would be my um, Typhoon, Mini Typhoon, I guess, which is very, very close in size. Uh, again, quite a bit lighter. You can definitely feel the weight of this guy. Uh, but not too much difference. There's a little more blade length there uh, and a little more overall size and certainly the handle size on the Typhoon is much more hand filling for me. And so I like the ergonomics here much, much better than I like the ergonomics here. That said, it's more because of the girth of the knife than it is because there are some ergonomic issue with it. So there are a few comparisons for you. And finally, let me give you my sort of overall take. I'll give you one last nice close look at the knife. So there is the lock side, the pocket clip, backspacer. Uh, here's the show side with the knife open. You can see that beautiful bronze finish. Very, very attractive. Uh, overall, guys, I think this is a great knife. Highly collectible, highly interesting, and it's nice to see something different. It's not for me, and probably not for a lot of you either, since there's only 100, but it is great to be able to check something like this out, and I hope you enjoyed the video from that aspect. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll talk to you soon.